When a soccer player flounders game after game, it's called being out of form. When a golfer starts underperforming, it's called a rough patch. When a writer is going through a creative drought, it's called writer's block. So what do you call it when a leader starts to struggle, when they are not able to perform to the best of their abilities? I call it leader's block. And that's why we are here today, to talk about this condition. My name is Ritu Herish, and I have been researching and studying leader's block for the last five years, speaking with leaders across the globe, probing them on the obstacles they have faced. So let's jump in. What is leader's block? First, some of you may be thinking, I'm not a leader. I don't lead teams. I don't have that leadership designation. So is leader's block relevant to me? The short answer, yes. If you have the capacity to influence, impact, and inspire even a single person with your action, thoughts, or products, you are a leader. For example, a sales executive is a leader because they are influencing their customers with their products. A parent is a leader because through their actions and thoughts, they are influencing and inspiring their child. A tennis player is a leader because by exhibiting her skills, she is inspiring hundreds of young players. Everyone in some capacity, whether that's small or big, is a leader, including you. With that out of the way, Let's move on. Leader's block is a phase when the leader is unable to perform to the best of their abilities. It's a phase when they are uninspired, demotivated and disengaged. I have spoken to thousands of leaders about these phases throughout their careers. That led me to two big insights. The first insight. Even though leader's block was as common and pervasive as flu, there wasn't a name for it. It was important to have a name so that we could codify the condition and then talk openly about it. The second insight, despite it being so common, people didn't feel comfortable talking about this phase. They feared being judged. They thought they were the only ones suffering and as such thought there was something wrong with them. There was a taboo attached to it, a stigma, and I wondered why. Was it self-inflicted? Was it the culture? I came to the conclusion it was a combination of both. It's self-inflicted because we think and are made to think that leaders are superheroes. We look at asking for help as a sign of weakness and we don't want to talk about it. It's also the culture we have all grown up hearing that leadership is a journey. But what we don't hear is that like any journey, whether it's through air, water or road, there will be turbulences, waves and bumps. Nobody prepares us for that. Our organizations encourage experimentation and continuous learning, which requires us to take new paths and try new things. But do those organizations allow us to make mistakes? The answer in most cases is no. Therefore, it's important to build awareness about leaders block so that we can recognize it, acknowledge it, and then overcome it. If leader's block is not acknowledged and left unchecked or unattended to, it can lead to more serious consequences like derailment and burnout. It's a precursor to burnout. Also, leader's block has impact not only on the leaders, but also their teams and ultimately the organization. Let me share my own story. It was November 2002. I was sitting in my manager's newly furbished office and he had something to say to me. The company's promotion list had come out and I wasn't on it. I was disappointed to say the least. I took a day off basically to brood. Next day, my manager called me to his office and asked me, what's going on? I assumed that he was asking about how I was feeling. I told him I was disappointed, but that it was okay. He didn't look convinced and asked me again, Ritu, What's going on with your team? At this point, I was quite confused and said, I'm not sure what he was referring to. Then he told me, while I was away, my team went to him and said they were disappointed and unhappy that I did not get promoted. My manager was taken aback. He hadn't heard anything like that before. He told them that they should trust the system and it's a matter of time before I will be promoted. I couldn't believe what I had just heard. 
there was an overwhelming sense of surprise, joy and pride. This incident is one of the key highlights of my entire career. Flash forward five years, I'm in my manager's office. He wanted a chat. A few of my team members had complained they were not happy with me and wanted to move out to another team. I attempted to say something in my defense, but I decided to keep quiet. I walked out of my manager's office and thought to myself, what happened? How did I go from being a rock star to a flop star? And this time there was a feeling of sadness and dismay. As I look back now, I realize I was in the middle of a classic leader's block. I wasn't a flop star, I was a blocked star. Before I share more stories around leader's block, let's talk about your stories. So let me ask you, have you ever experienced leader's block?